welcome to the Auto Car Show. Now, it was inevitable that on our show, the two siblings, the Vento and the Rapid, would come into a face-off. Like I told you when I did the Rapid test drive, under the skin, they're essentially all the same. The big difference is the looks and the price, with the Rapid being substantially cheaper. Now, to make this Comparo more interesting, we threw in the winner of our last time's diesel saloon comparison, the Verna. Now, the Verna had sailed past the Vento on its value for money card, but now that there's the Rapid in the fray with a better price and that the Vento has got some upgrades, it stirs up the pot quite a bit. Which one will come out the winner? We have to find out. What Skoda has done on the surface is taken the Vento and given it a family look. The pullback headlamps, the wide fanned out grille and the fog lamps are similar to the Fabia. The bonnet with its centre crease is unmistakably Skoda. The rest of the car can easily be mistaken for the Vento and the tweaks to the rear are just not enough to give it its own identity. To tell a Rapids rear from the Ventos, you have to hunt for the details. The crease flanking the number plate is different, the tail lamps are slightly altered and the bumper is changed. The Škoda also doesn't have the chrome strip on the boot lid lip that the Vento has. However, even with the little differences, it's the Rapid that is the better looking of the two. The Vento follows the Volkswagen's clean but rather unexciting family look and doesn't have the road presence of the Rapid. Now parked next to the handsome but straightforward Europeans, the Verna looks like the wild child. Sharp, angular and full of interesting cuts and creases. It's clearly the most sporty looking one and Hyundai's fluidic design is the one that really makes you turn around for a second glance. The interior of the Verna is really the one that looks the richest, the plushest of the lot. In fact, what I'm trying to say is the one that looks the most expensive in this comparison. Just the way the dash is laid out to the steering wheel, to the textures on all the dashboard materials, the perforated leather seats, it feels very, very upmarket. And the feeling that you get is you get a lot with this car. And it's not only a feeling, it's actually very well equipped too. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Verna has Bluetooth connectivity, iPod and AUX compatibility, keyless entry and go and a reverse camera on its extensive options list. The Vento, though not as well equipped, is not too far behind. Like the Verna, it has climate control, steering mounted audio controls and a USB port. The Rapid just gives you the essentials, power windows, climate control and an audio system with AUX and port. Now the Rapid and Vento share a lot of bits with each other as well as their hatchback siblings. So there's a lot of mix and match. Whilst the Vento and the Rapid share the same dashboard, the Škoda's gear lever is borrowed from the Fabia. The steering wheel is typically Škoda four-spoke design, but the air convents, power window switches and door pads are shared with the Vento or Polo. It is in tactile feel that the Vento differs from the Rapid. The steering and the gear lever are leather wrapped. And though these are small details, they feel a lot better than the Rapid's bits and pieces. The Vento and Rapid also have identical seats, which means they're almost similar in comfort and interior space. Now under the hood, it's no difference in the similarities. They both have the identical 1.5 litre 106 bhp engine whilst the Verna gets a 1.6, 126bhp engine. The Vento puts out power in strong bursts, but there's a bit of waiting before it happens. And this character may be exciting and makes you feel like the Vento has more power, but it actually makes you work the gearbox more in traffic. The engine also pulls cleanly to the red line and you won't be wanting for performance, but you just have to work a bit harder for it. Now the thing that strikes you first is that the Rapids engine is a lot more refined than that of the Vento. It's a lot quieter, you don't hear it as much in the car. And it's also more responsive, you know, there's less of a lag and it picks up from low RPMs much easier, making it more drivable.
flat out performance between the siblings is almost identical with the rapid getting to 100 km per hour just a 0.01 second faster than the Vento. But in real world driving there are big differences. It's clear that the Skoda has found the better set of tune and the Rapid actually feels more responsive than the Vento. But as far as powertrains go, the Verna scores well too. What strikes you at first in the Verna is how refined this engine really is. It's the quietest of the lot and it's the least intrusive. The power delivery of the Verna is extremely linear. Now there's no sudden rush of power when the turbo kicks in, so it's not really exciting. But this linearity has a flip side, it makes it really easy to drive in the city. You don't have to really shift down gears too much, you can do what I'm doing just now while talking to you guys. Amble around in a higher gear at low RPMs and then just put your foot down and continue. For all its sporty looks and stance, the Verna is quite a letdown when it actually comes to having fun behind the wheel. The problem is it simply doesn't feel planted, even at 80 km an hour. The steering feels numb and weighs up inconsistently, while bumps make the car leap all over the place and this just doesn't give you the confidence to push hard. Plus, it doesn't make the ride very settled too. The Verna is supple at low speeds though, but sharp bumps do catch it out. The short travel suspension occasionally bottoms out and it's never really a completely comfortable ride, low or high speeds. Hyundai clearly has some way to go when it comes to suspension tuning. Now when you're cornering harder, whilst the Verna is all over the place, the Vento feels a little better, it's the Rapid that's really the most sorted of the lot. It's got the best body control and it's the one that inspires the most confidence. Dynamically, the Vento is almost similar to the Rapid, with decent steering and good brakes. But Volkswagen have aired a little too much on the side of comfort, making the suspension settings a little softer. This means that the Vento doesn't feel as settled as the Rapid round the corners. But it does help with the low speed ride. At low speed, the Vento has probably got the better ride between the Rapid and the Vento. It's extremely pliant and glides over all the bumps and potholes, whilst the Rapid feels a little bit firmer and you feel them filtering through. Now, what the Vento gains in low speed ride, it loses out when you garner momentum because it pitches a lot and it gets a bit choppy, so you tend to get tossed around in the back seat, whilst the Rapid actually feels a lot flatter. So, when you consider it overall, it's the Rapids backseat that is the most comfortable to be in. So, Skoda has learned from Volkswagen's mistakes and hence the Rapid suspension feels the most sorted. The stiffer Skoda feels the most composed and stable of this lot. And it's not only about comfort, the back seat has space too. The Ventos and the Rapids backseat are pretty similar and we always liked the Ventos backseat because it was pretty spacious in it. It's pretty much the same here. You get a lot of width, you get a lot of legroom and you get the lever like the Vento to push the passenger seat in front and have ample legroom for yourself. Now the slight difference is the seat pace over here because it feels a lot higher from the floor giving you more under thigh support so feels a lot more comfortable in this one but the seat itself is a little bit firmer. When it comes down to the everyday dip into the wallet, the Verna's wide power band ensures that you don't use the throttle too much, which means that it has the best fuel efficiency figures. It's 13.8 km per litre in the city and 17.9 km per litre on the highway. The Rapid comes in a close second with 13.5 km in the city and 17.6 km per litre on the highway. The Vento returns the poorest figures because you end up using the throttle a lot to get over the line. So in the comparison between the siblings, everything that the Vento does, the Rapid does so much better. Be it ride, be it handling, be it performance. And of course the fact that the Rapid is priced less than the Vento knocks the Vento out of contention. Now, can the Rapid actually take on the Verna, which was the winner of our previous Diesel Saloon segment comparison? Well. 
It's hard to beat the model-like stunning looks of the Verna, the well-appointed interiors, or the fact that it has a great equipment list. But the core values of the Rapid that we mentioned earlier, ride, handling, comfort, and performance, are what we feel comes out ahead of the Verna. That, along with the fact that the Rapid is priced considerably less, make it a value-for-money option that clinches the deal for it to be a winner.